Whether you're using a GoPro or any action camera, there's always a need to do post-processing on the images or footage to make it look good. I know a lot of people who get frustrated. They buy one of these action cameras and they say, my video or photos looks nothing like what the manufacturer shows. The manufacturer does a lot of work to make that material look good. And if you want to explore these techniques in depth, I actually have a whole course here on lynda.com all about processing GoPro footage and stills. But for now, I'm just going to take a couple of shots and give you the highlights. It all comes down to this. You're going to want to remove the lens distortion, and this can be done with lens profiles or the GoPro software, which is free. Additionally, a little bit of color correction and boosting of the saturation goes a long way. Let's open up a video file from a GoPro into Photoshop. You'll note that Photoshop gives you the ability to use video files since Photoshop CS6 extended. And if you're working with CC, it's pretty straightforward. We'll start by going into Photoshop and making a new document. Now, you're going to want to choose from the film and video presets and then select something that matches your size. I'm going to be delivering this back to play on a television set, so I'll choose HDTV 1080 and click OK. Now, you could simply choose to bring up the timeline panel so it's viewable and create a video timeline. To add a clip to the timeline, just click the plus button and navigate to the video file that you want to use. I'll go right here into the GoPro folder and just grab that one and choose open. Now you'll see there's two shots in the timeline, the white layer and the GoPro video file. Let's just delete away that white layer by selecting it and pressing delete. If I press play, I can see the video play back. And we see the initial getting ready and strapping in. And then they get ready to go, get their gloves on, and head out. Well, this looks like a better place to start the clip. So let's just cut that there, select the front end, and press delete. You see it goes away. Now let's watch what we have. Depending upon the speed of your hard drive and a handful of other things, it may drop a few frames, but Photoshop's almost playing the full frame right there. 29.97 frames per second is what we had for real. And this is pretty interesting. We are well above the canyon floor, and this is my nine-year-old son at the time, and this is him seeing a waterfall from above the waterfall for the first time. Now as we get towards the end here, there's going to be some parts we don't want, and he comes in for his landing. So let's get him all the way in there. And that looks pretty good. And we could end it right there. I'll just drag that back. You'll note while you're here that there's a lot of things you could do right inside the timeline. So, for example, you can consider to process this image. I like to do things like just doubling the video group. So if I select the video group and press Command or Control J, it makes a second copy. You'll note that that copy is directly on the one below. And putting this into multiply mode works really well. It adds up the colors down below. So by multiplying a second copy of the footage on top of itself, it does a nice job of enhancing that. Additionally, any of the other adjustments, like a curves adjustment, can be applied and invoke the auto adjustment there. You've got the ability to lift up the shadows and recover the highlights, although you can't bring back a blown out sky. And when you're all done with that, you could take advantage of things like vibrance if you wanted to pop the colors a bit. And you'll note that this is really not that bad of a shot. We could really get a sense of magnitude there for the zip lining adventure. Now, one other thing that's kind of cool is that you can actually apply additional correction to this image. One of the things that you could do is apply a filter to the image. So if you select it, I just turned off the top copy for a moment you can apply a smart filter. Let's just make a little more room here and grab the first video clip and I'll say filter, convert for smart filters and click OK. Now you can apply lens correction and you'll find that this works pretty well including the ability to even say, oh, this is a GoPro. And this was shot on a Hero 3 Plus and it goes through and fixes it and you can even specify a little bit more like what type of camera you were shooting on. Now, in this case, this was actually the regular Hero 3. 
and it was a black edition of the Hero 3. And you see that a lot of the wide angle distortion is fixed. While you're in here though, you can actually compensate for other issues. For example, if we go back here to custom, I could fix the rotation slightly and just straighten out that shot a bit. Not too bad there. Let's just dial that back to about 10 and a half degrees. And you see the waterfall is now straight. Looks pretty good. And I'll click OK. Now to reuse that filter on this other layer, just highlight it for that top copy because now the two are different and you can copy and paste. Let's just actually make a slightly different approach here. I'll throw this top copy away and instead of doing it with blending modes, why don't we take advantage of filters? Filter, Camera Raw. That's right, you can actually run Camera Raw on your video. So take it to town. Pop the clarity like you're used to. Bring up the vibrance so it's nice and rich. Looks pretty cool. On the top sky here, I'm gonna just pull down a little bit and drop the exposure slightly while rolling the color temperature just a little bit to introduce some blue back in there. Now be careful that you don't go too far because you can't recover a totally blown out sky, but you could put a bit in there. And looking at the image as a whole, I feel that a little more saturation will be well suited. Let's lift the shadows and recover the highlights a bit, and then jump over to sharpening and go to town to bring out the detail. This is exactly like the stills we processed earlier. So option dragging can recover some of the edges there. And if I click OK, it updates. So let's take a look at that, where it started and where it ended. That was a combination of applying lens correction to remove the distortion and straighten out the shot. Because after all, when you're riding on a zip line, you're not exactly worried about, is my camera crooked? and then run the camera filter to enhance the overall look. Once you're all set, you could choose File Export and render out that video. You'll find a lot more about working with GoPro footage available in a course here on lynda.com.